What if you don't need to live in pain and suffering? What if you could give up your karma and have a life of abundance and joy? What if you could start creating magic and miracles that you never thought were possible? Get ready to listen, share, and experience the magic that is you. Now, here's the host of Creating Abundance with Ease radio show, Dr. Helen Gitlevich. Welcome. I'm Dr. Helen Gitlevich on Creating Abundance with Ease. And today our show is, are you with us or against us? How much do you have to fit with everybody else's point of view? We, a lot of times, they make us agree. We either agree with them, or if we do not, then we are against them. So let's see if we have another choice. I'm a medical doctor. If you're joining me first time, I actually um, was born in Russia and came as a kid, became a family physician in Chicago, and only end up quitting it after 10 years and starting searching for different reality. Did a lot of techniques, modalities, spirituality, healing techniques. And now I'm an access consciousness facilitator, Akashic Record teacher and founder of School of Akashic Record, three-day body facilitator, podcast host, and facilitating classes around the world and changing people's reality. You can you can have a private session. You can join me for classes online, in person. And let's talk a little bit about tools that can change your reality and not agree or disagree with people and just be an interesting point of view. So what is that about people trying to prove that their point of view is right. And if we don't agree with them, they're against us. In Russia, there was actually a logan. If you're not with us, you're against us. Um, and that's actually true for a lot of cults, a lot of religions, a lot of ethnic, ethnic groups, a lot of cultures, if you don't agree with us, you're against us, and they ostracize you. They literally sometimes kick you out of the society. And that's been for thousands of years. So there is always a fear that if we don't agree with somebody, we will lose them. If we don't agree with a policy, with certain countries, you will be put to jail or killed. In 1937, um, in Soviet Russia, or communist Russia, Stalin killed like 20 million people, sent them to prison or exile for just difference of opinion. Even now in Russia, if you don't agree with the current policy, you might be put in jail for 15 years. So how do we deal with that? Do we have to agree? Do we have to disagree? Or there is a different possibility? Actually, I found out that there is a different possibility. We can look at point of view, doesn't matter who it is, what it is, where it is, and realize it's just a point of view. Let's say we are looking at mm, the scissors. It was just handy on my desk. So if you're looking from this perspective, like the camera is looking, you're seeing the scissors. If I turn this way, you see a, like something flat, like a line that has some silver, maybe looks like a pen. 
if I turn it this way, it already looks like a scissors. But if you see just this portion, it looks like two circles or ovals. It depends where you're looking from. That's the point of view. We don't realize that. But majority of people, or maybe even all of the people, look from a certain point of view or multiple points of view. It all depends how they grew up, where they grew up, what culture, what upbringing, who were their parents, what they learn in that moment. All of that is pretty much creates the filters, colors of the filters, the size of the filter. And all of that is how we look at the world. Some people have blinkers on. They see only this way. If you're watching, you can see me putting my hands to my temples like the horse has the blinkers. Or if you're just listening, that's what I'm doing. Seriously, it's, it's all about the prism of our life that dictates of how we perceive our reality. And the prism is all our experiences, not just this lifetime, multiple lifetimes. Let's say we killed somebody or they killed us 500 years ago, let's say, in the Middle Ages. We see them, our heart is pumping. So our point of view might be, oh, I'm in love. In reality, it's you kill them or you might be looking through the prism of, oh, I don't like them. They're scaring me. So both are not true. It's not the person in front of you. It's just the points of view that you have dictate how you perceive everybody and everything. It's the prism of our life, our experiences, dictates how we view our reality. Our point of view creates our reality. So together with our experiences, points of view and the colors, that we perceive what's in front of us, it's not what's there a lot of times. It's not um, perception of the truth. It's perception of what we perceive as truth. So every person has a different perception of the truth. You know how that saying is, the truth is in the eye of the beholder. Correct? That's exactly what it is. So my truth is different from your truth, different from her truth, different from his truth, and so on and so forth. So when we start talking and proving our point of view, all we're doing is just expressing it. And what if instead of trying to agree, disagree, look from that point of view, we just acknowledge it. Yes, this is an interesting point of view you have. Wow. Hmm. You might like that point of view, you might dislike that point of view, but you don't have to agree or disagree. You don't have to be for or against. This is just a point of view. Yours is just a point of view because a lot of times we take ourselves so seriously and make our points of view are so valuable so important that we cannot change them we cannot move to look from a different point of view we cannot move and see from another person's point of view no we are so stuck 
because we make our point of view so significant because it's the right point of view. How often did we do that? How often did we decide that our point of view is the right one? What if there is no right and wrong, good or bad? What if it's just points of view where we function from? I'm sitting here by the computer. So in front of me is a computer, my camera, my desk. In this moment, it works for me. It's the correct point of view for me. When the show is over, I'll walk away. What if we treat everything in our lives as just a point of view? just an interesting point of view and we can pick another point of view we can walk we can move we can turn the object like i said with the scissors you can turn it around look at this point of view look at this point of view because even turning it this way and this way looks different it might look almost the same but see that point here if you're watching you can see it but if you're listening i'm looking at the scissors or showing it sideways and the little hook is pointing down but if i turn it around it's pointing up and the little knob is pointing up i think it's i have no idea what it is for maybe like oh i think it's uh, for this teaching so there is so many ways of looking, but wait, actually those scissors can open up. I didn't know that. Well, I did. But if you're looking just from one point of view, you would not know it. What if we can experiment with everything in our lives as just that, an object, a subject? that we can examine, we can play with. Because look at that. When we are serious, oh, those scissors are important to me. Oh, if I break them, that's it. But what if you were willing to lose everything and break everything, and there is no mistakes? What if it's simple as that? Then you would look at the scissors and open them up and say, oh, I can actually use one part of it and open letters or maybe scratches. There is so many uses of that just one object. But no, we have to agree with people and, and say that, oh, but those are just scissors and you cannot open them up. You can just cut with them. This is actually time for our first break. Um, I know time flies. So you've been listening to Creating Abundance with Ease with myself, Dr. Helen Gitlevich, on the Inspired Choices Network. And we will be right back. Many of us live our lives based on karma, on the past and all the unfinished business in our lives. What would you choose if you did not have karma or if you could choose what you desired instead. By tuning into Creating Abundance with Ease radio show with Dr. Helen Gitlovich, you'll receive tools and inspiration you can use to create the abundance in your life. You are an infinite being with infinite choices. Are you ready to have ease with creating abundance? Listen for Creating Abundance with Ease radio show every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 11 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Mountain, and 9 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world 
knowing your voice matters, and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is the Creating Abundance with Ease show with Dr. Helen Gitlovich. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to helen.g at att.net. Now, back to the program. Welcome, everyone. I'm Dr. Helen Gitlovich on Creating Abundance with Ease. And um, today our show topic is are you with us or against us? And we've been talking in the first uh, part of our show about changing people's reality uh, with the classes that I facilitated, but also with interesting point of view. Because when we agree or disagree with somebody, we're not with them or against them. We are not um, when we disagree, it doesn't mean we are against them. It's just we have a different point of view. And as we talked at length, that every person has a different point of view, depending on how they live their life, what their childhood looked like, what their previous lifetimes were, all that reincarnation stuff. If you don't believe that, that's fine. You don't have to but then just concentrate on your life that however you were brought up however you kind of like experienced other people that will influence your points of view it's pretty much like um the mosaic of the windows like mosaic windows or the color windows you look through that you don't look through the clear glass you you don't look just at what's there um there's a wonderful joke and i told it a few times if you're new and never heard it wonderful if you heard it i apologize or not because i'm not sorry to saying it again it's just a reminder about that how we look at the world dictates of decisions and judgments and our choices so a couple moves into a new house and in the morning they're having tea breakfast enjoying themselves and the wife looks out of the window and says oh my god our neighbor doesn't know how to wash her laundry he's like why oh look at her laundry it's all gray and in spots the husband didn't say anything next day same thing it was at the time when there was no dryers or washing machines or maybe they choose not to use those to just hang the laundry outside the house or in the country that still use that um so it's going on for a couple of weeks maybe a month and one morning they they get up and having breakfast and she's like looks at there it's like oh my god did you t teach her how to do laundry because all her laundry is now bright white and all clean no spots the husband looked at her and said i got up early and washed our windows so that's how we judge people through our dirty windows. Dirt might be offensive to some people, but let's face it. We've lived through a lot of shit in our lives. So a lot of that shit is covering our lenses. So we're looking pretty much through the brown colors. Not some of them may be a little bit more colorful, depending on what you ate or how you experienced life. Sorry for the graphics. If you have a weak stomach, uh, you can turn uh, off the 
so. But what if we start washing our lenses? What if we start getting rid of our shit? And actually uh, look at the world the way it is, not the way we judge it it is. Because our points of view are nothing more than judgments. Points of view, nothing more than projection and expectation and programs that either we created or we allowed other people to implant us with. You know how they say our parents or children can push our buttons and they know where they are and it's so easy for them. And another saying that goes together with that, well, they know it because they created it. Well, in some ways it is true because they did implant us, but we allowed the implants. We allowed them to implant us with anger, with guilt. How many parents implanted their kids with guilt? Uh, yeah. And I actually realized that I've done it to my child as well. There are a lot of implants I've done with guilt. And now all I need to do is just say something that gets it activated. How cool is that? Not so cool as I realize it now. It was um, when I didn't have the tools of access consciousness. But it's more about what we choose what if we choose not to be implanted or explanted okay maybe now it's a little too late because there is a lot of implants and explants there and programs but what if we start letting go of those programs one of the questions lately in access we've been using what are you defending with that point of view or what are you avoiding with that point of view or with situation, doesn't matter, or with programming or with judgment, because a lot of it is as simple as, oh wait, I'm avoiding being me or I'm avoiding freedom or lightness. At the same time, I'm defending being part of everybody else's world, belonging. That's where are you with us? Because part of that is we always try to belong. If our point of view is different, we don't belong. We are unique and different. But wait, we are. So what are we doing when we are trying to fit, trying to agree, align and agree or and sometimes we resist and react, but it's the same, two sides of the same coin. Let's say we agree with the point of view just to belong, just to be with them. And yet, how do you feel about it? A lot of times we feel like, at least I feel like shit. I feel like, uh, okay, yeah, I agree. I know it's not quite true because I can prove my point of view to them because I'm right, they're wrong. All of it is just create fighting and separation. What if we acknowledge that they have their point of view and I have my point of view Neither one of them is right, neither one of them wrong. We don't have to agree or disagree. Saying that, in this reality, if you start doing it with certain people, certain people will acknowledge that and it will stop the argument. But in, with certain people, it might be beneficial just to say, yeah, you're right, I'm wrong, yeah. Because in their eyes, they are right and you're wrong. It's their point of view. Because they're looking at you through their lens. If you think of reflection, 
what you're looking in the mirror is nothing that other people see you, not like your reflection, because everything is reversed in the mirror. We are seeing a reversed image of us. We never see ourselves. People see us also not quite how we are because it's their point of view dictates how they see us. They can see from the back, they can see from the front, physical point of view, but they also can see through their point of view. I know it's getting confusing and I confused you completely. Not apologizing for that, but we have a wonderful tool in access consciousness. It's called a crazy phrase. Everything is opposite of what it appears to be and nothing is opposite of what it appears to be. The more we are in that labyrinth of trying to figure out whose point of view is correct or not correct, it actually keeps us looping in that labyrinth like a mouse searching for the cheese and the cheese is the truth. How often do we run through those labyrinths, only find out that there is a trap? And actually, the trap is empty. There is no cheese there either. But we get trapped in there by that search for the truth, one and only, the right answer, the correct answer, the something that will set us free, the one thing. What do you know? Does it actually set you free or locks you in that trap like that mouse that was searching for the cheese? It smelled like a cheese, smelled like a truth, and yet the trap closes and the mouse is either killed depending on the trap because now there is so many traps either killed automatically beheaded or halved or it's trapped in um, some trap with that people actually let them leave and let them go somewhere else somewhere else where you might not like it but you end up there anyway because you were searching for that one and only truth, that cheese in the mouse trap. And oh wait, there are also traps that use glue where you get stuck there and cannot move. And there are traps where there is a poison there that you eat and you die. So how much of all of that is describes your life where you're looking for that one and only truth and find poison glue meaning getting stuck getting trapped getting killed getting tortured and yeah i agree those are so cruel and yet how many of those traps did we create in our lives and how many of those traps are we using that other people create? Yeah, that's kind of like what I'm talking about. Are you with us or are you against us? It's pretty much those traps, depending on the person, depending on if it's a government, look, Look at what's going on in the world right now. Those traps, some of them are deadly. <laughs> I actually ended up in one of them a few months ago. And yet, there is a choice. You can always walk out from the trap. And we will talk more about the traps, about the points of view, and are you against us or or with us after we come from the break. 
and you've been listening to Creating Abundance with Is Uninspired Choices Network with myself, Dr. Helen Gitlovich, and we will be right back. Many of us live our lives based on karma, on the past, and all the unfinished business in our lives. What would you choose if you did not have karma, or if you could choose what you desired instead? By tuning into Creating Abundance with Ease radio show with Dr. Helen Gitlovich, you'll receive tools and inspiration you can use to create the abundance in your life. You are an infinite being with infinite choices. Are you ready to have ease with creating abundance? Listen for Creating Abundance with Ease radio show every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 11 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Mountain, and 9 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Magic and abundance are everywhere. What if you could tap into abundance and start creating your life with complete and total ease? Working with Dr. Helen Gitlovich will give you exactly that, total ease in creating abundance in your life. Dr. Gitlovich creates classes all over the world, both in person and online. She works with you to create abundance with your money, with your body, with your relationships, with all areas of your life, with total ease. Connect with Dr. Helen Gitlovich at creatingabundancewithease.com. Her contribution in your world will be a noticeable gift in a very short period of time. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows, along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is the Creating Abundance with Ease show with Dr. Helen Gitlovich. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to helen.g at att.net. Now, back to the program. Welcome forward, everyone. I am Dr. Helen Gitlovich on Creating Abundance with Is, and today our show topic is, Are You With Us or Against Us? And we've been talking for the last half an hour about being at the trap, because um, if we align and agree or resist and react, in either case, it's a lost cause because we don't have a choice. In the first part, we were talking about that the cultures usually exercised, uh, like eliminated and exiled people or killed if they didn't agree with them. And you can listen, uh, it was a long discussion. And in the second, when we are trying to find what's the truth, or again, align and agree or resist and react and try to prove how right we are, we get stuck in a trap just like a mouse, in a labyrinth or in the actual trap where there might or might not be cheese. There might or might not be poison. The trap might kill you or just trap you and you're stuck there forever and eventually die. Uh, so what else is possible when you when we are stuck? Let's say we are stuck with a point of view. We found a fixed point of view. We've decided we are right, but that's not freedom. And as I said earlier, there is a question. What are you defending with that point of view? Or what are you avoiding with that point of view? It's amazing how many things people avoid with points of view or defend keeping it in existence where it's pretty much as I said, 
not something that creates your life. That's no longer a choice because you're stuck with what is, you don't see what's in front of you, you're looking through the prism of all your experience. So let's do a little experiment. I love energy work and I love symphony. I love a lot of different modalities where you use energy. And one of the exercise I love is expansion because we cannot get trapped if we're space. The only time when we can get trapped or stuck if we contract ourselves enough and, as I said, defend or protect ourselves, meaning that we have to go behind the walls, just like in a castle, build the walls, build the mounts, and put the soldiers and make ourselves so small, pretty much non-existent. Just look at your life. How expanded your life is, if it's expanded, wonderful. If it's contracted or if it's not expanded enough, let's play with the molecules. And you can download similar, it's, it's evolved over the years, but and each time it could be different depending on the audience. But there is an example of that on my website, Creating Abundance With Is. You can download it for free. It puts you on my email list. So that's kind of like the price you pay. And you can always unsubscribe. Um, even if you're on my email list, you still get the meditation for free. Um, it will just kick your name out. It will not double emails unless on the list there is a different email and you can contact me personally through the email through the website saying hey Helen you're sending me two emails or you can unsubscribe from one of them uh, or both there is no pressure of getting emails and those usually have either a blog video information about the classes new tools and just Kind of like hi how are you and it comes out once a month unless there is some classes that's coming up that i might remind you about so um and you can get hold of me either through social media facebook instagram linkedin twitter i'm not there too much vk i'm not that much and um emails website and through Inspired Choices Network as well. So my invitation to you right now, drop your barriers. And if you don't know how to do it, don't worry. Just ask barriers down, barriers down, barriers down. Whew, wow, much better. Allow your crown to open up and pull the energy of the universe through your crown through your body and allow it to go to the earth pull the energy of earth through your feet through your body and allow it to go out through the crown mix them in the heart kind of like in the area where heart is thymus is and allow it to expand allow your consciousness to expand allow your being to expand just see if you can feel the walls of your room. You can close your eyes, you can keep them open and expand more, expand more, expand more. 10 miles, 10 kilometers, 100 miles, 100 kilometers, depending where you live, what you're comfortable with, use the measurements. If you're in the States, it's States, England, Australia, it's miles. If you're everywhere in the world, it's kilometers. So just, just follow your knowing. A thousand miles kilometers, ten thousand miles kilometers, hundred thousand miles. Make yourself bigger than Earth, bigger than the uh, universe. Whew. See that space that you are. Remember how small you made yourself and how much energy it takes to be that small? 
just expand. And from that space, find a molecule that is ready to flip polarity and change the point of view. Actually, think of any point of view you have and grab one molecule and flip it 180 degrees. And turn it around and flip it again 180 degrees. And if you don't know what 180 degrees is, it's pretty much opposite. If you have a battery, it has a plus and minus on each end. You flip plus to the minus side, minus to the plus side. It's when you put the battery wrong in the instruments, you flip it 180 degrees. That's what you do with molecules when you have a stuck point of view. Because this way you can look at that point of view from different direction. You can look from opposite direction, just like we were looking with the scissors. So we were looking this way, and now we flip it 180 degrees or another 180 degrees. And if you're watching me, I'm flipping the scissors along the long axis, 180 degrees, but then I flipped it uh, over the short axis. So the top becomes the bottom and the bottom becomes the top. And then this way and this way and turn it again 180 degrees and turn it again 180 degrees and again 180 degrees. Ooh, how are you feeling right now? Do you feel the same way about that point of view? Hmm. Actually, like I took one point of view and now I don't even remember what point of view I took because there is no point of view. When you're being an interesting point of view, you don't have a point of view. You actually have all the points of view and you're in total allowance of everything and everybody choices. That's simple. You don't have to fight. You don't have to be with them, for them, or against them. And it's time for our third and final break of the show. Uh, when we return, we will talk more about how we can be an allowance of people's choices, people's lives. And we, uh, you've been listening to Creating Abundance with Ease with myself, Dr. Helen Gidlevich on Inspired Choices Network. And we will be right back. Many of us live our lives based on karma, on the past and all the unfinished business in our lives. What would you choose if you did not have karma or if you could choose what you desired instead. By tuning into Creating Abundance with Ease radio show with Dr. Helen Gitlovich, you'll receive tools and inspiration you can use to create the abundance in your life. You are an infinite being with infinite choices. Are you ready to have ease with creating abundance? Listen for Creating Abundance with Ease radio show every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 11 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Mountain, and 9 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is the Creating Abundance with Ease show with Dr. Helen Gitlovich. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to helen.g at att.net. Now, back to the program. Welcome forward, everyone. I'm Dr. Helen Gitlevich on Creating Abundance with Is. And today our show topic is, are you with us or against us? And we have only a few minutes, like 10 minutes left in the show. In the first three parts, we were talking about interesting point of view, because that's how you get out of being with them or against them, trying to fit instead of being the uniqueness you are. In the second part, we were talking about that anytime when we have a fixed point of view and when we try to find the truth or the right 
opinion, the right choice, the right anything, you're being trapped like a mouse in a labyrinth or in a mouse trap. And you can get killed, stuck, doesn't matter. And we always look through our points of view, meaning that it's a life experiences. It's not actually what's true, what's there in front of us because it's all influenced of how we see the world through the glass, through the prism of whatever we experienced before. And in the third part, we were um, changing polarity of the molecules, flipping 180 degrees our points of view and seeing, perceiving of what can be different. And being an allowance of other people's points of view because in their eyes, they're right. And what if you don't have to be right? What if you don't have to be correct? What if it's more about, hmm, you have an interesting point of view, you're right, and move on. It stops the argument, it stops fighting. How much do we have to fight everybody and to prove that if we find that right answer, if we prove that we are right, we have the right to exist. Wow. That's a topic in itself. <laughs> Rightness as a way of proving that we have the right to exist. Hmm, interesting. That might be coming in the next few weeks. But next week, we are going to have a show in Russian. We, uh, with Nami Liprotivnas, which is kind of the same topic, are you with us or against us, but in Russian. And if you understand Russian, you're welcome to join us. Even if you don't understand Russian, you can join us. Because whatever we talk today might not be what we are going to talk next week. It's a similar topic in a different language. I doubt it will be a translation of whatever I said today. Because I'm one of those um, ADD, ADHD person that has a syndrome of a shining ball. Oh, the ball is there, so I'm getting distracted and I totally don't remember what I was talking about before. Because a lot of it is just interesting point of view, as we said before, because today I'm looking to the world, to you, through the lenses of your point of view. Everybody who is watching it now or in the future, I'm pulling it out of your heads. So the people who will be listening or watching it next week will be different. The prism will be different. The glass will be different. The colors will be different. So I might be talking about totally different perspective of the same topic. And I realized I can talk forever, which is interesting. I always considered myself shy, but since I've been doing the podcast and classes and private sessions, oh my God, I cannot shut up. It's, it's been very interesting how everything just fits together. And instead of looking at, oh, that's wrong to talk too much. Oh, that's wrong not to talk. You have to speak your truth. You have to make sure other person agrees with you or I will resist and react. It's, by the way, nothing I'm talking about is cognitive. Guys, it has nothing to do with our cognitive mind. It's all reactions. My invitation to you is step out of the reaction and go into action. Because I'm not saying agree or resist whatever is going on in the world. I'm talking about it. 
there are atrocities that are going on in the world. And that's what's true. It's not the truth. It's not the point of view. It's what's true. What are we going to do about it? Is a different point of view. What can I be or do today that can change all of this? What can I be or do today that can create more consciousness today? More of joy, more ease. How can we make Earth to be self-sustaining and be for us in 500 years or a thousand years instead of dying in another 100 or 200 years or maybe even 30 years? What can I be or do different? Not differently because a lot of people kind of like, oh, how can I fix this reality? How can I fix this thing? This is not about it. This is not about being with, like, are you with us or against us? Are you with them or against them? It's if you are with them, you can't be with us. If you are with us, with that, if you're against them, you're with us. All of that are just points of view. What if when you are interesting point of view, when you're an allowance of everybody's point of view, everything that's going on, no matter how horrible it is, because if you're in resistance, you will not see when it's happening to you, your loved ones, or in the world. It's not about ignoring what's going on. It's about perceiving what will change it and knowing what will change it and actually doing the action and being the action, being the energy that will change it, being the invitation to different reality, being grateful for everything that's going on, including horrible things. Those things, even the horrible things, maybe they are there to wake us up and say, stop, it doesn't work for me anymore. No matter how small, how big, how disastrous it is. If we agree and align, and if we resist and react, we cannot change anything. The only time we can change, if we change our point of view, if we um, change the polarity of everything that's going on in the world by being an interesting point of view. Our show is coming to the end. I know, I love being with you guys. Um, what if it's not the end? Next week, I'm here. And the following week, I'm here. Or you can listen to the archive. We have, I think, well, definitely over 100 shows. Um, I think it's more than 150 shows so far because I've been doing it for a couple of years now. Um, or maybe over 100, yeah, 52 weeks a year. Yeah, it's over 100 because I've been doing it over two years. And there are a lot of shows you can watch or listen to. I mean, I think the first year it was just a podcast, audio podcast, which is on 200 platforms. And now it's also on 50 TV channels, including Binge TV, which is available on Smart TV, on cable. And I'm so grateful for every single one of you watching, listening to me live or in the future, because every single one of us, if we be in allowance and be action instead of reaction, how much can we change the world? Each person can change so much if we choose something different. I love you. I'm grateful for you. Thank you. And I will see you next week, same time, Wednesdays, 11 o'clock, Central Standard Time. Depending on where you are, it's different. Bye. Thank you for choosing to listen to Creating Abundance with Ease radio show. Dr. Helen Gitlovich will return next Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 11 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Mountain, and 9 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com.
We hope you'll join us. Until then, have fun using the tools of the week in your life and start creating magic in your life and your body.